In this tutorial, we'll be looking at how our body fights infection, and it's another AQA-specific tutorial. The first aim is, can you describe the different types of pathogens? Then, can you explain the process of phagocytosis? And finally, can you explain how we develop immunity to a specific disease? Firstly, it's important to note that microorganisms are everywhere. Uh, in fact, on our body alone, we carry about a kilogram of bacteria. Um, every day, you will inhale about, well, up to a million bacteria. Now, clearly, they can't all be harmful, otherwise we'd be getting ill all the time. However, some microorganisms or microbes are harmful, and we call them pathogens. Think of the word psychopath, pathological, something that harms you. So pathogens are harmful microorganisms. There are three types of pathogens, but you really need to focus on two. Firstly, there are bacteria. Bacteria can come in all shapes and sizes. These are rod-shaped, but you can also get spiral shape and also round-shaped bacteria. Bacteria are very small. They're about a hundredth the size of your normal body cells. They harm you or make you feel ill by damaging your cells and producing chemicals called toxins. They can also reproduce rapidly, making you feel ill in a fairly short space of time. The second type of fungi, but you don't really need to know much about those. And thirdly, viruses. Viruses are about a hundredth the size of a bacteria cell. They actually require our cells to reproduce, so they replicate using our cells, which is why they are not technically living. And they cause damage to our cells, which is why we feel ill. Viruses have a very simple structure. They have a protein coat, and inside that protein coat, they hide genetic material, either DNA or RNA. They work as follows. They land on the cell, then they inject their genetic material inside the cell and actually use the cell's own machinery to start manufacturing the protein coat from which the genetic material came. So once inside the cell, the genetic material will replicate very rapidly. Each piece of genetic material will then form its own protein coat and then the viruses will burst the cell open and escape and basically affect other cells. Pretty scary stuff. Examples of bacterial infections include tuberculosis and salmonella. Examples of viruses include HIV and the common cold. And fungi, things like athlete's foot. And that is how you describe the different types of pathogens. Now we'll look at aim two, the physical barriers to infection. These are physical obstructions to bacteria actually entering our bloodstream. Firstly, the most obvious physical barrier is our skin. There's not much to say about that, really. In our blood, we have mashed up cell fragments called platelets, very tiny. And what happens is when you're cut, these platelets will form a mesh. So these cell fragments will clump together and form a blood clot. And this seals the wound very quickly, preventing any further infection. Finally, in the lining of our lungs or the lining of our respiratory tract, we have two types of cells which work together to help clear infection. Um, firstly, we have ciliated epithelium cells. You can see these cells here, which look like they've got this spiky sort of hair cut. But what those are, tiny hair-like extensions called cilia. We also have goblet cells, which basically think of like a cup which holds mucus. So this green stuff is mucus. So imagine you just breathed in and you're flooding your respiratory tract with pathogens everywhere. These pathogens get stuck in these cilia and that's because the goblet cells secrete this mucus, so this mucus sort of forms a layer at the base of these cilia cells. The mucus actually traps these bacteria and then the cilia start to sweep this um, bacteria up towards our mouth. So these these get swept towards our mouth where we swallow them. The bacteria then get into our stomach where the stomach acid destroys them. And that's all there is to say about physical barriers. But the real stars of the show are our white blood cells. They take action once infection has actually reached the bloodstream. And the first type, there are three types of uh, chemical defense using white blood cells. The first we're going to look at is called phagocytosis. So here we can see an invading bacteria which has entered our bloodstream and here's a large white blood cell called a phagocyte. So what happens is the phagocyte starts to change its shape so it forms a capsule around this uh, pathogen. We call this process engulfing. So the phagocyte engulfs the bacteria. 
Once it's formed a capsule around the bacteria, it starts to secrete or release digestive enzymes. The digestive enzymes will flood this capsule space and digest the bacteria, breaking it down so it no longer can cause us harm. And that is the process of phagocytosis. White blood cells can also produce chemicals called antitoxins. Now I said bacteria produce toxins which start to make us feel ill. They're poisonous chemicals. So some white blood cells produce antitoxins which basically neutralize the toxins. But the most sophisticated form of defense comes in the form of producing antibodies. And understanding how antibodies works helps us develop our understanding of how we become immune to specific pathogens. So antibodies are actually proteins produced by the white blood cell, or specific white blood cells, which lock onto and kill pathogens. But how does this mechanism work? So bacteria have specific markers on the exterior of their cell membrane, um, which are proteins, which we call antigens. In fact, all our cells have antigens, they have their own antigens. And our body can recognise its own cell markers, its own antigens, but it cannot recognise bacterial or foreign pathogen antigens. So whenever an invading pathogen affects or enters our bloodstream, it rings alarm bells in our body, which says, foreign antigen detected, we must act quickly. I like to think about this in terms of thinking of barcodes. So imagine you're shopping in one store and every product there has its own barcode. So let's say you're in a supermarket like Sainsbury's, every uh, product will have its own barcode. But if you were to take a Sainsbury's product and put it into, let's say, Waitrose, um, maybe the Waitrose scanners wouldn't detect that food's barcode. So it would flag up an alarm bell saying this isn't part of our store. It's a bit like that. So let's say this pathogen has invaded our body for the very first time. Our white blood cells will kick into action by trying to develop the correct antibody with a complementary shape to this antigen so it can lock onto it. Now this can take some time, so you can imagine, for example, that the first antibody looks like this, which doesn't have a complementary shape. So it's a game of trial and error. Let's say the next antibody looks like this, and that again does not have a complementary shape to this. But eventually, the white blood cells should be able to figure out the correct shaped antibody, this one, which will lock on here. So once it's locked on, it can actually destroy the pathogen. So let's say now that we've destroyed the pathogens and we're healthy again. Some of the white blood cells, called memory cells, will actually remember how to make that specific uh, antibody. So if we're ever infected by the same type of pathogen, very quickly, we can rapidly produce many copies of this antibody to quickly clear the infection before we start feeling the symptoms and start feeling ill. When this happens, we are immune to a specific disease. So we are immune when our immune system remembers how to make the correct antibody for a specific pathogen. And that is how you develop immunity to a specific disease.